different ways and to recognize it in different feelings and Often we have to face some type of crisis during our recovery, 
such as the death of a loved one, financial difficulties or divorce. These are realities of life, and they don't go away just because we get clean. Some of us, even after years of recovery, found ourselves jobless, homeless or penniless. We entertained the thought that staying clean was not paying off, and the old thinking stirred up self-pity, resentment and anger. No matter how painful life's tragedies can be for us, one thing is clear, we must not use, no matter what. This is a program of total abstinence. There are times, however, such as in cases of health problems involving surgery and or extreme physical injury, when medication may be valid. This does not constitute a license to use. There is no safe use of drugs for us. Our bodies don't know the difference between the drugs prescribed by a physician for pain and the drugs prescribed by ourselves to get high. As addicts, our skill of self-deception will be at its peak in such a situation. Often our minds will manufacture additional pain as an excuse to use. Turning it over to our higher power and getting the support of our sponsor and other members can prevent us from becoming our own worst enemies. Being alone during such times will give our disease an opportunity to take over. Honest sharing can dispel our fears of relapse. Serious illness or surgery can present particular problems for us. Physicians should have specific knowledge of our addiction. Remember that we, not our doctors, are ultimately responsible for our recovery and our decisions. To minimize the danger, there are a few specific options that we may consider. Using local anesthesia, avoiding our drug of choice, stopping drug use while we are still hurting, and spending extra days in the hospital in case withdrawal occurs are some of our options. Whatever pain we experience will pass. Through prayer, meditation and sharing, we keep our minds off our discomfort and have the strength to keep our priorities in order. It is imperative to keep NA members close to us at all times, if possible. It is amazing how our minds will go back to our old. 82 Narcotics Anonymous Ways and old thinking, you'd be surprised how much pain we can handle without medication. In this program of total abstinence, However, we need to feel no guilt after having taken a minimum amount of medication prescribed by an informed professional for extreme physical pain. We grow through pain in recovery and often find that such a crisis is a gift, an opportunity to experience growth by living clean. Before recovery, we were unable to even conceive of the thought that problems brought gifts. This gift may be finding strength within ourselves or regaining the feeling of self-respect that we have lost. Spiritual growth, love, and compassion are idle potentials until shared with a fellow addict. By giving unconditional love in the fellowship, we become more loving, and by sharing spiritual growth we become more spiritual. By carrying this message to another addict, we are reminded of our own beginnings. Having had an opportunity to remember old feelings and behaviors, we are able to see our own personal and spiritual growth. In the process of answering the questions of another, our own thinking becomes clearer. Newer members are a constant source of hope, ever reminding us that the program works. We have the opportunity to live the knowledge acquired by staying clean, when we work with newcomers. We have learned to value the respect of others. We are pleased when people depend on us.
For the first time in our lives, we may be asked to serve in positions of responsibility in community organizations outside of NA. Our opinions are sought and valued by non-addicts in areas other than addiction and recovery. We can enjoy our families in a new way and may become a credit to them instead of an embarrassment or a burden. They can be proud of us today. Our individual interests can broaden to include social or even political issues. Hobbies and recreation give us new pleasure. It gives us good feelings to know that aside from our value to others as recovering addicts, we are also a valued human being. The reinforcement received by sponsorship is limitless. We spent years taking from others in every conceivable way. Words cannot describe the sense of spiritual awareness that we receive when we have given something, no matter how small, to another person. We are each other's eyes and ears. When we do something wrong, our fellow addicts help us by showing us what we cannot see. We sometimes find ourselves caught up in old ideas. We need to constantly review our feelings and thoughts as we are to stay enthusiastic and grow spiritually. This enthusiasm will aid our ongoing recovery. More will be revealed 83. Today we have the freedom of choice. As we work the program to the best of our ability, the obsession with self is removed. Much of our loneliness and fear is replaced by the love and security of the fellowship. Helping a suffering addict is one of the greatest experiences life has to offer. We are willing to help. We have had similar experiences and understand fellow addicts as no one else can. We offer hope, for we know that a better way of life is now real for us. And we give love because it was given so freely to us. New frontiers are open to us as we learn how to love. Love can be the flow of life energy from one person to another. By caring, sharing, and praying for others, we become a part of them. Through empathy, we allow addicts to become part of us. As we do this, we undergo a vital spiritual experience and are changed. On a practical level, changes occur because what's appropriate to one phase of recovery may not be for another. We constantly let go of what has served its purpose, and let God guide us through the current phase with what works here and now. As we become more God-reliant and gain more self-respect, we realize that we don't need to feel superior or inferior to anyone. Our real value is in being ourselves. Our egos, once so large and dominant, now take a back seat because we are in harmony with a loving God. We find that we lead richer, happier and much fuller lives when we lose self-will. We become able to make wise and loving decisions, based on principles and ideals that have real value in our lives. By shaping our thoughts with spiritual ideals, we are free to become who we want to be. What we had feared, we can now overcome through our dependence on a loving God. Faith has replaced our fear and given us freedom from ourselves. In recovery, we also strive for gratitude. We feel grateful for ongoing God consciousness. Whenever we confront a difficulty that we do not think we can handle, we ask God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. A spiritual awakening is an ongoing process. We experience a wider view of reality as we grow spiritually. An opening of our minds to new spiritual and physical experiences is the key to better awareness. As we grow spiritually we become attuned to our feelings and our purpose in life. 
By loving ourselves, we become able to truly love others. This is a spiritual awakening that comes as a result of living this program. We find ourselves daring to care and love. Higher mental and emotional functions, such as conscience and the ability to love, were sharply affected by our drug use. Living skills were reduced to 84 Narcotics Anonymous The animal level, our spirit was broken, the capacity to feel human was lost. This seems extreme, but many of us have been in this state. In time, through recovery, our dreams come true. We don't mean that we necessarily become rich or famous. However, by realizing the will of our higher power, dreams can come true in recovery. One of the continuing miracles of recovery is becoming a productive, responsible member of society. We need to tread carefully into areas that expose us to ego-inflating experience, prestige and manipulation that may be difficult for us. We have found that the way to remain a productive, responsible member of society is to put our recovery first. NA can survive without us, but we cannot survive without NA. Narcotics Anonymous offers only one promise and that is freedom from active addiction, the solution that eluded us for so long. We will be free from our self-made prison. Living just for today, we have no way of knowing what will happen to us. We are often amazed at how things work out for us. We are recovering in the here and now and the future becomes an exciting journey. If we had written down our list of expectations when we came to the program, we would have been cheating ourselves. Hopeless living problems have become joyously changed. Our disease has been arrested, and now anything is possible. We become increasingly open-minded and open to new ideas in all areas of our lives. Through active listening, we hear things that work for us. This ability to listen is a gift and grows as we grow spiritually. Life takes on a new meaning when we open ourselves to this gift. In order to receive, we must be willing to give. In recovery, our ideas of fun change. We are now free to enjoy the simple things in life, like fellowship and living in harmony with nature. We now have become free to develop a new understanding of life. As we look back, we are grateful for our new life. It is so unlike the events that brought us here. While using, we thought that we had fun and that non-users were deprived of it. Spirituality enables us to live life to its fullest, feeling grateful for who we are and for what we have done in life. Since the beginning of our recovery, we have found that joy doesn't come from material things, but from within ourselves. We find that when we lose self-obsession, we are able to understand what it means to be happy, joyous, and free. Indescribable joy comes from sharing from the heart, we no longer need to lie to gain acceptance. More will be revealed 85. Narcotics Anonymous offers a it's a program of recovery that is more than just a life without drugs. Not only is this way of life better than the hell we live, it is better than any life that we have ever known. We have found a way out, and we see it work for others. Each day more will be revealed. Book 2. Personal Story. My gratitude speaks. When I care in. When I share with others. The N.A. Way. A gift called Life 87. A gift called Life. I had always said that I would never use drugs. Looking back, 
everything I said I wouldn't do, I ended up doing. The first time I used drugs, I started with pot. I didn't like it, but I got used to it. If I didn't use it, I didn't feel cool. I had a good job at the time, it was the place to work when you left high school. I was expelled from school in the 10th grade for starting a riot. For me, just landing that job was fortunate. I was hanging out at the pool hall before work. Around 3 or 4 o'clock, I started to feel tired and someone said, try some of this. It will help me stay awake at work tonight. I didn't even ask what it was. I just opened my mouth. Within 20 minutes, I felt like a new person. I could talk to people I was normally afraid of. I felt better than them. I started to take about 10 diet pills a day. My logic is that it just too made me feel so good. Why not try 10? It worked, but after 6 months, I started to miss work. I lost 50 pounds, my hair started to fall out, and my teeth started to hurt. One day at the school hall, a close friend said, Hey, try some of this. You shoot it in your arm. Once again I said, I'll never do that, but about one hour later, I tried it. From that day, I was in love with it. I never cheated on it. If it said jump, I would jump. I even quit my job, because something like this was too good to miss. I always wanted to forget my problems. With heroin, I could. It always fixed me. It cost a lot of money, so I did it only when I had the money. When I started selling heroin, I got ripped off a few times. I can remember saying, Whoa, are those guys in bad shape when they rip off their friends? Well, six months later, I started ripping them off. I always wanted people to come to me for answers. I like that power. So when I got my income tax return check, I bought some heroin, sold all of it, but saved one shot for me. It sold fast. I made a quick buck, and got a free high. I felt 87. 88 Narcotics Anonymous. Like a king, and I had control. Everyone came to me for heroin, because I dropped the price. When all the other people had shot their supply, I was the only one holding. Then I raised the price, and started using more than I was selling. I didn't want to do that, but I had no choice. I didn't know that I was controlled by the drug at the time. I thought that I was handling it okay. I lived in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the time. One day, the man I got my drugs from asked if I would be willing to take a chance and go to Puerto Rico with him to purchase some heroin. My answer was, sure, why not? We could have been busted while getting on the plane to come back home. I had brought some heroin with me and wrapped it in foil. When we went through airline screening procedures, they didn't check me. I got away that time, I was lucky. We came back, and my luck ran out. I got busted for a series of times consisting of six felonies. This was my first time in jail, and I was afraid of all the things that I heard from the street. A lot of it was true, and some of it wasn't. That didn't make me any less afraid. I stayed for one week and was bailed out. Two months later, I got busted for possession of one ounce of heroin and went back to jail. Again, I stayed for one week and was bailed out. 
Only two weeks later, I got busted again for breaking into someone's house in broad daylight. In order to supply my habit I had started to rip off everyone, the family, my friends, and strangers. I knew I was going to jail this time, so I just gave up. My sentence was two separate terms, each 11 and a half to 23 months in jail. I spent 13 months in jail and got out on early parole. When I got out, I made a promise to myself to limit my heroin use to the weekend. I didn't know anything about addiction. Little did I know that it was the first fix that started me. Everyone I knew either went to jail for 5 to 10 years, overdosed on drugs, or was an addict. Consequently, I was led right back to the street. In only two weeks, I was worse than I was before I started again. Lenny, the only friend that I had, and his sister gave me $1,000 to pay off my parole officer in order to move to Florida. In my heart, that's what I wanted to do, but my addiction was too great. I got the money and said to myself, buy some drugs, sell them, and have spending money when you get to Florida. I went to New York with the money, bought the heroin, but put it all in my arm. Now what was I going to tell them? The excuse making and storytelling was over. I was addicted. I came back to Pennsylvania, and for the first time in my addiction, I felt ill. Lenny came to see me and didn't want to hear any more stories or a gift called Life 89. Exclusive. He said, you need help when you rip me off, your friend. You're in trouble. I knew that he was right. I accepted his invitation to stay with him and his wife until I got help. I felt like hell in my gut. I called my parole officer and told him I wanted to go away somewhere for help. He sent me to a treatment center in North Central Pennsylvania. I heard a lot of bad things about this place, but I didn't care. My back was against the wall, and I was tired of living the way I was living. Even though I didn't really want to stop using heroin, I went to the center. I stayed there for 60 days. Looking back, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. Before I got there, I believed once an addict, always an addict. I believed that I'd never be able to stop. They showed me a new way of life, a way to cope with being an addict. I decided to move to the area. There were four NA meetings each week, and I went to all of them. I also got a sponsor and went to a lot of discussion meetings. It helped me to a degree, but the only time I felt strong was at a meeting or after one. Before the meeting, I was always thinking about getting high. This feeling lasted for about six months. Then some good things started to happen to me. They asked me to speak at a meeting. I felt part of the meeting that night. It made me feel good about what I was doing. I started to go to NA meetings in prison and helped to start new NA meetings. Then I fell in love. Looking back, I was in heat. This new life and everything in it was a new ball game. Now, I not only had to deal with me but with someone else too. I was clean for one year and not ready for all of the new things that were expected of me. I tried as hard as I could, and so did she. We moved to Western Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, there was no N.A. within 300 miles. So I went to other 12-step programs for that year. The members were all older than I, not that that should matter, but I felt alone. 
Well, I came home from work one day and my wife said, get out. I don't love you anymore. I felt like someone had put a knife into my heart and turned it around again.